Hi, I'm Zach, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over a few arcade DIY units. Now, as much as I would love to have a full-size arcade cabinet in my house, there's just really no room for that. So a lot of the things that I've bought have been things that sit on the desk. Uh, starting with this build a -Cade. Now this build a is running a Raspberry Pi 3 Plus, and this is a kit that you're gonna to have to build and piece together yourself. Also, there's a lot of different options for the control deck that's on the front of this. And so I find this one to just be a really cool presentation. When I look over, especially when it's running in a track mode, I get really that feeling of the arcade environment. Now in this video, I'm going to be concentrating mainly on the iCade units. Now these are products that have been discontinued and so you can find them on eBay for fairly cheap. Uh, this front one here is the iCade Core. Now this does not have the bigger body as we're gonna see here in the iCade cabinet version. Now in this one, what I've done is I've taken out the encoder board that was in there originally. We put in a switch encoder board. So now all these buttons and joysticks are run to that and we can use the USB out on this controller and hook it right up to a switch. And this is a great little unit just because it's USB and it's powered by it. And as you can see, that USB power is also going to allow you to install some LED lights if you choose. So that's the IK core. Now this is the IK cabinet. And as you can see, I have three of these versions. And we're gonna take a look at each one of these and see the different types of options that you can kind of build those out. And the first one is a fully self-contained unit that's running off of a Raspberry Pi 3. I've added a bottom to this unit and a backing. And we've included an AC port to run the power to all the other devices that are inside of this unit. And the main things that are inside of this unit is the Raspberry Pi 3 Plus, the iPad 2 screen, audio amplifier with speakers. And then we also have some LED lights up here that are going to light up for the marquee. So this is a great all encompassing unit, but it is very heavy. The great thing about these iCade units that I like in building them out is that they are very playable. The control panel is full size, the buttons are full size. It's not like the GRS build a -Cade, where it's a neat novelty, it sits there, it's still playable, but it's not gonna give you that real kind of tactile feedback from an actual arcade joystick and buttons. So that was my first IK build. Now, again, it was very heavy, it was self-contained, and it was nice, but I also wanted something a little lighter. So when I approached this second IK unit, it was, how can I get the switch to run to it and maybe use the iPad as a monitor. Well, we could still do that with this one, except that we can now also run RetroArch and some of these arcade games natively on the iPad. And what was great about using an iPad with this iCade system is that an iPad has its own power. It has its own speakers. The display is the iPad. So there's no longer batteries needed or any of the extras for this unit. It doesn't need to be plugged into a wall. This controller unit will plug directly into the top of an iPad and then you're good to go. So that's what's really nice about this. It's very light and there's just a lot of options with it. We can even hook up an HDMI input into the iPad here and run the switch externally into it and use this control panel going to the switch uh, to control. So we can actually just use the iPad as a screen. And of course we can have that in multiple different landscape or portrait modes. So let's take a look at how this iCade unit was tore down and put together with that switch encoder board in there. So first we're gonna remove the control panel from the actual cabinet housing. It's very easy. On the inside there's two screws to remove and then on the front there's two hex screws there. Remove those four screws and the control panel will lift away from the actual arcade cabinet. And now we have to remove a lot of Phillips screws from the bottom of this control panel. But once those are removed, we can lift away the bottom of the control panel and reveal the encoder board and all the buttons and wiring for this. So it's gonna look like the joystick wires and button wires are glued into the encoder board, but because of the age of these devices, it's gonna be very fragile. You're gonna be able to just kind of wiggle and break those away. I did buy the GRS arcade kit buttons and joystick. Now this is great, it's $20. It's gonna come up with a very good quality joystick and these buttons, I really like the feel of them. They're not as clicky as the ones that come with the actual iCade unit. So you can kind of hear the difference. 
So the GRS kit comes with an encoder board, but I'm going to set that aside. I'm actually going to be using a switch encoder board and you can find these on Amazon. With the switch encoder, we at least be able to map all of the face buttons and shoulder and trigger buttons to the eight main buttons on the controller. So we're gonna remove all the buttons. And before we do that, we're gonna to have to remove all of the switches on these buttons. Just go ahead and leave all the wires attached to it because the new buttons that we have already have wires for them and we're not gonna be reusing any of this wire harnessing inside of the controller unit. So once the switches are removed, now we're gonna remove the ball top to the joystick. Just easily use a screwdriver and the bottom of the joystick to hold it in place so that we can unscrew the top. Go ahead and remove the covering plate and then you'll see that we have four screws that we're going to have to remove to disconnect the actual joystick from the controller panel. Just four easy screws and then the joystick's going to come right out. And now we can go ahead and remove all of these buttons. Just go ahead and remove the nut that's around the entire button and then they'll pop straight out. And now we have an empty control board. So let's go ahead and grab our new buttons from GRS. And you can see that they already have the wires. So we're gonna go ahead and feed those wires through and then the button. It is going to make it a little messy as we're working because we're gonna end up with a lot of wires everywhere, but they're already pre-wired. So that's nice that we're not gonna to have to reconnect those. Go ahead and feed the wires through the nut and then we're gonna screw that down. And that way we will secure the actual button to the control panel. Now you can see with the joystick here, it came with a metal plate that's normally for mounting. Uh, I used that metal plate on the front of the unit to give me the template of where the screws need to be placed for this new controller. Placing that and now screwing those holes for the joystick, I can see that flipping it over and trying to apply that metal mounting plate, it's just too big for the surface area that I have on the back of this controller unit. But instead, I think we'll be fine just attaching the joystick to the front of the control panel. Now, using black screws would have been probably better to kind of blend those into the actual control unit surface. We do get this joystick disc here that goes around the shaft, and that's really gonna hide those screws underneath anyway. This new joystick, the switch buttons, the connectors for them are sticking out a little too far on one side for me to be able to fit it into the case. So I bent it one way trying to fit it in and it looked like it was going to work, but then I realized I had bent it the wrong way. Now, I knew if I bent it the next way that it was most likely going to snap and that's exactly what happened. It had fatigued that metal way too much to be able to use because I didn't have a switch that was actually going to be able to replace this particular one on this joystick, so I had to repair it. So I had to take apart the joystick and I soldered together the connector and put it all back together. We still need to add a home button. So we're gonna be adding that in the top right here. And then we're also gonna need a start and select button. And for that, we're gonna be drilling through the front panel. Now I've got a packet of these little buttons. And I'm gonna pick some that have kind of a color scheme similar to the paint scheme and side panels that are already on this iCade unit. One extra thing that really wasn't shown here, and I apologize, is that the 25 cent light that's on the front of this control panel actually is going to connect up to the five volt pins on your encoder board. Very easy to do, and once that's plugged in and the controller actually receives power over USB, that light will light up. Now I'm gonna use some 3M tape here to attach to the encoder board and just press that down into the bottom of the controller unit. Now, before we put all of this back, the first thing I like to do is to make sure that I've hooked up the switches and wire them to the encoder board. So we're gonna check the joystick first because we wanna make sure that up is up and down is down. And when you're dealing with joystick switches, it's the opposite side switch because as you push the joystick to the right, the inside of the joystick is moving to the left. So you have to keep that in mind and then wire that appropriately to the encoder board. Always double check all these buttons. Make sure your connections are snug and tight because you don't wanna to have to put this all together and then take it all apart again. So after I've checked everything, now I'm gonna assemble the bottom of the controller to the top, and I'm gonna screw in about five different screws. I'm not gonna put them all in because, again, I'm gonna check it one more time and make sure that all of the buttons are registering. 
And that's one great thing with the switch is that we get a very good input test. And you can just run it all the way through that and make sure that all of your buttons are working correctly and registering. Once that's all done, then you can feel free to attach all of the screws back into this controller. Just make sure that you're looking at the hole that you're putting the screw in and that none of your wires are over top or filling that gap. You don't want to have to screw through and then actually pinch one of the wires that's actually showing up in the screw hole. Uh, just make sure they're all clear before attaching the screws back in. Now once that's all done, we're going to attach it back to the cabinet and we're almost there. Now because I do like playing pinball and having like a vertical screen that like the iPad could run and having the switch go to it, I wanted to be able to have side buttons on this unit. And I thought about screwing and adding buttons into the side here. But because how that bottom controller unit works, that would be a little difficult to have that installed and yet still screw into it and have it fit properly. So what I did was I added rails here on the side of the cabinet. And that's gonna allow me to attach Joy-Cons to the side there. And what's great about having Joy-Cons that attach is that if you have the Rumble or HD Rumble, then you're gonna get that kind of feedback too as you're using them. Now, because I won't be using those a lot, I found these nice little rubber covers that go into the rails and kind of hide those and make this look a little bit more finished than just having bare Nintendo Joy-Con rails on there. So I've really enjoyed having the option to be able to just put an iPad in here. It's much easier to move this. It's very light. Or again, use the iPad as a screen for the Switch, Raspberry Pi, or anything else that can send an HDMI signal out. So with this third iCade unit, I wanted to be able to hook up other Raspberry Pi units or even some of these retro handhelds that I've been collecting. It'd be great to be able to plug those in and get a full experience on a cabinet. But I didn't want something as heavy or as set and hard to plug into as the original iCade unit I built. So this one, I also used an iPad 2 screen, but I was able to find this metal housing on AliExpress. So this metal housing actually fits very flush into these iCade units. It's able to hold it just by friction. It fits in there nice and snug. Now, here's the encoder board for the iPad 2 screen. We actually have our iPad 2 screen here, and we're gonna see that it fits onto this metal frame. And this metal frame actually has 3M tape. So we're gonna test it first, make sure that that lines up and that we can see how the bezels are going to fit. We're gonna go ahead and connect up this encoder driver board, and we're gonna test the screen. We wanna make sure that we're actually seeing the signal first before putting it all together. And as you can see, here's a tab for the film covering the screen. I'd leave that on until we're ready to actually attach this screen to the metal housing. That way we can prevent scratches on the screen while working with it. So now that we know it fits in there, we're going to go ahead and remove the, the backing of the 3M tape. We're going to put the iPad in there, press around, make sure it's flush. I like leaving the screen on while attaching it so that we could see the borders and make sure that it was lined up correctly. But because this is going to fit so snugly into the inside, we got to make sure that those connectors for this driver board don't stick or extend past the metal frame. So I've actually had to open up a hole in the back of this metal casing so I can run the HDMI and power out. I also was able to put in these small laptop speakers and wire those directly to the encoder board. So this actual unit here of an iPad 2 screen in this metal casing actually has sound that comes out of it. Is it the greatest sound? No. The one that's in my original unit is much louder, much cleaner. But you do get sound right from this iPad housing, and you can run it all off of a portable battery. And that's what's great about these little retro game handhelds. They run off their own battery. It can send out a signal. I can plug the controller into this unit, and then I can also just power the monitor off of a USB power. So you can see why I selected these iCade cabinets. I really like their design. They're easy to mod and really gets you into that space of recreating the arcade feel on your desktop. And you could decide for yourself how far you want to go with it. Do you fully want to mod one out so it's a self-contained unit with a lit marquee and sound system and that plays very well on its own? Or do you want something that's a little bit more open so that you can use an iPad? or something that you can use your handheld retro devices and have that connect up to something. So as you can see, there's just a lot of different options with these little iCade units. You can kind of pick the best way that it's going to work for you. 
So thanks for watching. Let me know down in the comments whether you've used any of these IK cabinets yourself to build out or mod for the Switch or Raspberry Pis, or if you're using other types of desktop devices to kind of fill in that need for the arcade experience. So if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next video.